Welcome back to the shop. Tonight I'm going to try and figure out what in the hell is inside of this thing. This is a shock absorber. I've taken shock absorbers apart before, but this one is kind of special. It's got these three wires sticking out of it. This is an adjustable shock absorber. Not really adjustable, it's just got two different modes. This came out of my 1995 Nissan Pathfinder that I'm parting out, but my 93 has it too. Basically, you know, on the console inside, there's this little switch. It says sport one way and comfort the other. And it's got a little yellow, orangish light to tell you if you're in sport mode. So, what does this do? Well, I can never tell the difference driving the things, but if you stood outside and bounced the bumper with it in sport mode, it didn't bounce as much. You bounced it in comfort mode, it bounced more. So, that's telling me that this is somehow changing what's inside of the shock. Your standard run-to-the-mill shock absorber. Um, first off, this is just a dust cover. This is where it all happens. You've got the cylinder in here and you've got a piston that moves back and forth inside of that cylinder. That piston has holes drilled through it. And as the piston moves back and forth, it displaces the oil that's also in there. Um, smaller holes and thicker oil mean that the shock is harder or larger holes and thinner oil make for a softer shock. Of course, you've got this uh, rod that's going in as well. So as that piston's going in, you're adding more uh, metal to this, basically adding more volume to it. So if it was just oil in there, it would lock up solid, be, you know, hydraulic lock. So what they'll do is they'll have, you know, a little bit of airspace in there and fill that with a compressed gas. Uh, I think nitrogen or something like that. So basically what that does is it, it gives it a little bit of wiggle room so that as this rod is coming in, it doesn't lock up. It's also why when you get one of these brand new and you cut the, um, the banding that they put on it, the thing expands like it does, or even like this one still does. Now the reason they have the compressed gas instead of just an air gap, um, it's something something cavitation. My understanding of it is that if you don't have sufficient pressure inside and you hit a bump, um, basically, rather than forcing the oil through the holes, it'll just create a little vacuum pocket behind the, um, behind the piston, and then that'll pop out again as soon as you're over the bump, and it just it doesn't dampen properly, and it doesn't handle for shit. So they put the compressed gas in, and then, of course, over time, the, uh, the compressed gas goes away, and then you, uh, your shock doesn't work so well anymore. So for anyone who's interested, here's the part number. It's a Nissan NC03 56110 88G00, gas filled. It says, do not open, do not heat, and made by KYB of Japan. You know, I think that, uh, that bit that says do not open is probably more of a, uh, a guideline, you know? Okay, I got my multimeter hooked up here, set to resistance. So I've got, um, yeah, I got the black lead hooked to the black wire, which I assume is common. And then I've got a blue wire and I've got a yellow wire. So let's see, the yellow wire appears to still be wide open. Really? It wasn't before. Okay, yellow wire is nothing. Blue wire is, yeah, like 2.7 ohms, okay? And I can push it down. I have to put some weight into it, but not loads. So let's try something here. Let's hook this lead. 12 volts negative from a car battery. This lead, 12 volts positive. And now let's, I don't know, let's try it on the blue lead. Okay, I heard a little noise in here. And now I'm getting an open circuit on blue. And 2.7 ohms on yellow. Something in here has switched. 
So let's see if it's any easier or harder to push. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so clearly, <laughs> clearly, that's uh, sport mode. Okay, so I push this down. You can see it's coming up real slow. It's because it's on hard. If I flick it over to soft, it goes up more quickly. Hard. Soft. Hard. Soft. Okay, so whatever's making this thing work seems to be in this end cap here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this dust shield off. I'll probably need to do it sooner or later anyway, and that might expose something in here that might give me some clues. Too well, did I? That is a big thick rod. This is off a Chevy shock that I took apart. These aren't, you know, tiny, but they're much smaller than that, which has me wondering if this has internal passages. I'm betting if I can get that nut out, I might just learn something. Yeah, the shaft's all nice and polished, and that's a damn shame because I'm gonna have to unthread it with a pipe wrench, I think. Uh, this stuff's pretty hard. And, uh, yeah, nothing will really bite. I'm gonna drill a hole in this because I figure this is pressurized. If this is connected, it's probably pressurized. Might be pressurized, not sure. So, and again, I don't think there's a whole lot of pressure left in here, but I'd rather have it blow up when I expect it to blow up. Yep, that's all we get. Sort of a gray, greenish almost oil. Not that appetizing to look at. It honestly doesn't smell that bad, it just kind of smells like an air mattress. So it's becoming very apparent that this shaft is very, very hard. Got a clamp in the vise as tight as they dare to tighten the vise. And yeah, just turned the whole fucking thing right out of it. Ha, ah, finally cracked her. So, I had to actually put a line of weld on that, um, that shaft there. No, it's coming off. There we go. Huh. Mystery deepens. Okay, so we've got some kind of orifice in here. Yeah, that's what it took to hold it in the vise. So I'm going to orifice there too. Here's this top piece, and yeah, there's some kind of, um, well, whatever that is, in it. Oh, it turns. Doesn't turn far, but it turns. Yeah, it stops trying once it's gotten to where it needs to be, but like a servo motor, it'll fight you on the way there. Decent bit of torque, too. All right, so we've got the end of the, uh, the rod here that it goes into. I can get pliers onto it, but it turns, it seems, much further. Well, it does appear to be turning. I wonder if I can unscrew it. Huh. Okay, so it's not the kind of thing that screws down on a, a taper or something. So I get this on here. See, there's some, not loads, but some resistance to this. I turn it 90 degrees. Moves real easy. So, it's clearly changing how fluid, or at this point, air, moves through the system.
I'm gonna hold on to these because these bushings are still good. These could be good uh, isolation mounts for something. Interesting, that's not hooked up to that. That is... That is free. All right, so this is the um, cylinder inside. See, it's very nicely polished. I imagine that's some kind of valving for the fluid to get out. All right, here's the piston liberated. You can see it's got a piston ring on it. Some kind of... Um, I don't know what this is, honestly. Plastic, probably. Some description. That's what makes it seal. It's in that little groove there. Got a big old spring on here. I'm kind of surprised to see that. We got these holes. And I'm looking into those holes and wondering. Can you? Let me get better lighting. Yeah, now you can see it. I think. Hard to tell in the viewfinder. Anyway, it looks like. This rod that goes through is hollow where it goes through there, and it's got holes that line up with these holes. And I'm guessing that they exhaust down here at the end. So let's take a look at what was on there. There's um, this plate. You can see it's got holes going all the way through it. If I hold it just right to the light, you can kind of see through it. Anyway, so that's the uh, sort of main Damn from a fox head, I guess. A couple of washers. And yeah, I'm honestly not sure what's with this. I can only figure that how much you tighten this down changes um, how much it presses these washers against these holes inside, and how tight that's pressed against the holes changes the flow. So that would be a way to tune it at the factory. But it's not how the electronic tuning works, so let's take a closer look at the shaft and figure that out. So I'm looking at this piston here, and you can see these holes are drilled through it diagonally. Just got a piece of wire through it here. So you've got four holes on the outside of this one that match up to these holes, and then four holes on the outside of this one that match up to these holes. And you've got a washer on either side, and they're held on by that spring. So for fluid to get through this, it has to push that washer out of the way. I'm also staring at this end bit here. You can see it's got holes in the end, but you can't see through it. It's got little washers in there, which I imagine is a similar sort of arrangement. Okay, so I've got a primitive testing rig set up here. Got pliers at the bottom to move the valve, and I got some tranny cooler hose on here. So if I blow into the tranny cooler hose and then turn the uh, pliers here. So yeah, it's just a simple rotary valve that determines whether or not those are connected to that. So if those aren't connected to that, then all of the fluid has to flow through this cross-drilled bastard with the washers on it. But if it's open, then it can flow through those little holes, through that, and um, through this thing. All right, so I got a piece of uh, line on this here. It blows out the two holes in the sides. And, um, come on, focus, you bastard. So yeah, it's just a, uh, it's a limited opening, but it's an opening. So one last look at the cylinder here. It's got a, um, sprung washer deal up top too. I'm not sure if that's just another uh, restriction sort of deal or if that's some kind of check valve so that the uh, the compression and the rebound are different. Um, yeah, I, I don't know of enough about uh, race tuning shocks, let alone you know, tuning shocks for production vehicles to know if they bothered with that, but yeah, more valving. Okay, Let's see what's in this actuator. Um, so here's the, yeah, nothing really to see there. Alright, so here's what's inside. Just uh, three wipers, some 
contact strips in here and then a little armature looking deal. So yeah, basically um, very similar to like a, uh, a door lock actuator or something like that, except it's not even geared. Looks like they basically started with a motor, a cheap little motor, and then instead of having a commutator, they just had this. So yeah, basically um, I would hazard a guess at that being common and then those being the colors. Actually, I can check that. Let's see, the closest one in is... Huh, it's interesting. Where's black go? Hmm. Black goes to there, that goes to... Okay, so that's weird. Okay, so that one goes through the cap to black. That's odd. But that must not be a cap then. So, whether you uh, have one of these and always wondered how they work, or uh, never even knew they existed until now, there's how they work. Um, I have no idea if other makes use similar designs. I imagine they do. It's fairly simple. But, um, yeah, if you've taken one apart that's different, I'd love to hear about it. If you've taken one apart that's the same, leave a comment anyway.